Hey everyone, welcome to the farm. Today we want to give you a quick tour of the farm. So we are here in January. It's a beautiful day in January. I don't even need a coat out here. It's awesome. Uh, but we just want to give you a quick tour. You know, obviously there's not going to be a ton to see here on the farm. So I'm just going to kind of walk you through each area, show it to you and uh, talk a little bit about what we're going to be accomplishing this year on the farm. So we are standing down here. We're about halfway down our driveway and I'm at the first area that I can't wait to plant up this year. This will be like a part shade garden, which we don't have a bunch of shade on the farm, especially where I've planted yet. There's some spaces up in the garden that will eventually be shade. Uh, so I'm excited to get some things down here like a uh, Japanese maple and some Brunera, which I love and I cannot wait to have on my farm. I'm actually going to plant this area up with you later this spring and I'm super excited about it. We're gonna go and head down to the barn. I've already taken you on a full barn tour, so we'll just kind of hit up that area and uh, just show it to you real quick in case you missed that. Here we have split the driveway to go head over to the barn. We've got, uh, they're not through with the electrical just yet. Hopefully they'll be coming soon in the next couple of weeks to hook everything up. But there'll be an outlet here on this fence line. And if you saw our Christmas light tour, we're so excited about that because now we can take Christmas lights down the entire fence line. So we're excited about that. So the driveway uh, splits here. We are actually gonna be putting in uh, more pasture fencing this year over here. All right, let's go look at the barn. So not much has changed down here since the last time I've showed you. We're waiting on the electrical, uh, but we did put the siding up. You can see there's still Christmas lights up, but by the time you see this video, there will not be any lights up. So uh, just rest assured. So the stalls have been awesome. We're getting ready to fill them with the mats and uh, some bedding. We're gonna try some pelleted bedding in there. So we're excited to try that out. We're gonna get the gravel in here and hopefully that will be here soon. Uh, but we're going to put the gravel, it'll come up here and go, hopefully you can hear me, we'll go to the edge of that barn there and you can see how muddy this is and how muddy this stays. And with the horses and we want to be able to drive the tractor up there to muck out the stalls. So I think this being in gravel, which is what I originally thought I wanted to do and we didn't end up doing it, but uh, I think that needs to happen. And I'm super excited because I'm going to place three pots along the front of the barn and put all these beautiful tall flowers in them. I've already got them planned out, so I need to order some more self-watering containers. And then, so I am doing the self-watering containers because these will get full hot, hot sun. And I just want them to be able to hold more. And plus I love having them. Uh, they're gonna be the same ones that I've got up near the road. And we can hook these up on drip because there's water down here. So I do plan on hooking those up on drip. You'll also be able to see that on video this year too. We are going to place, it gets kind of wet down here. Uh, there's lots of water that just kind of stays right in this area. So I do plan on uh, putting a willow tree down in that area right there. And willow trees love water. So they will soak up all of this excess water that we've got here. So if you've got a real uh, sloppy place, you know, that holds water a lot, putting a will, uh, willow and I think alder trees do the same thing too. Uh, but we're going to be putting a willow down here and I think it'll offer like a nice little shady spot. We were where the trailer's parked. We were going to move our fire pit down here. I'm not sure if we're still going to do that plan or not, uh, but you see we kind of like put an area for it. I don't know how to say that, but we put an area for it. We're going to make that a little bit bigger to make this turn around a little bit better. And that's about it for down here. Not much changes. So let's head up to the house and we'll take a look at the landscape there. Like I said, there's not a ton going on right now, but I want to be able to have it to reference, you know, how things grow and the things that I'm going to be adding. And uh, so let's go take a look up there. Don't mind the Christmas light. There's uh, four hungry mouths over there waiting for their food. This is the landscape. We put on our landscape ourselves. We did it about three years ago. And these are Laura Petulums, uh, the Crimson Fire, I believe, these purple bushes right here. They've done really well. They have not done well over at my parents' house. I'm not sure what the difference is, but here they've done really well. This area is not hooked up on drip. 
This is Russian sage over here and it gets about maybe two and a half feet tall is where it's at right now, but it gets these beautiful purple blooms on them and it smells so good. And I love how it kind of flops out over the sidewalk. So as you go by it, you're brushing it and you just hit the smell and it's just so great. And so, like I said, I usually save this area. I just recently widened it uh, like earlier this year and to have a little bit more space to do more bulky annuals right here. But when you're pulling up the driveway, you know, this is the spot that you first see. And so I love having my landscape. So in winter time, it looks great, but there's not a whole lot of color. And then in the summertime, I plant my annuals and this is where I can change it up every year to get a different color look and color scheme every year. I've planted a clematis. I want to say it's a pink me clematis right here and it really didn't do much this year so i'm anxious to see if it even comes up this year it's supposed to get really bushy and i want it to just engulf this entire area and give a lot of color to this area but it just did not do very well this year so i'm anxious to see if that even comes up we might have to change that out just a little bit over here we've got window boxes which i'm about to work on because i did not get them at christmas time we've got the um, echinacea right here, these are pink and one of them is doing really well, that one. And I think the dog comes out here and pees on these and these possibly may not get enough sun. These two are not thriving, there's three here. So I may move that to the garden and use this as another spot to do another bulk of color with annuals so that I can change it out every year. And. I had three huge limelight hydrangeas in here and they were on their, this will be their fourth season coming up. I've actually moved them to the garden. I'll show you where those ended up. But it was just, I mean, they were beautiful, but they were just too big for this space. So I changed them out for the little limes, which get, I'll show you the little lime that I have over here and the size that it gets. I think it's about five feet or so the other ones were six to eight feet and it was just it was way too much it made it look too unruly back here this is a dogwood a cherokee princess maybe it gets really really pretty spring blooms and it has actually put on a lot of weight it doesn't get full sun right here and i think that's why it's thriving i think here in southern virginia dogwoods they, they like a little reprieve from that, uh, that hot afternoon sun. Don't look at the window boxes. They're not ready to go. <laughs> and so let's see. Oh, I do want to show you if you do not have these in your yard for winter time, grab some. They're kind of pricey at the stores, but you can find them right now. They're called hellebores and they're not in bloom yet. But in February, when you are really craving those blooms these are the ones that are in bloom this is what it looks like when it needs to be cleaned up so obviously there's new growth coming from the bottom and then there's growth that looks kind of tattered that's ready to be cleaned off I just pruned that off a little bit and so this is what it looks like in this time of year but then also in the summertime it will have the spent blooms on them but it looks like it's still in bloom the petals fall off and what is left still looks like a bloom so it's still very very pretty but i i just love them because you know february when you're craving those blooms this is where you get it so hellebores they're probably close to twenty dollars each uh, but they this one has actually seeded itself so it's spread so i might actually dig some of this up this year and take it to the garden but it's uh, i want some more of these those those are awesome to have okay this is some iris. It bloomed beautiful this year. This grass I love. It's falling apart right now. We try to cut it back just a little bit. We need to cut it back some more or possibly burn the, the outside of it to control it a little bit because it just hung so far over. But it is, it's gorgeous sitting on the front porch and just seeing this nice wispy grass blowing in the wind. It makes it feel like it's a little bit cooler here. <laughs> It's not in summer, it is hot and humid. This right here is the little lime hydrangea. So this is what I planted two of down there. And so it gets about this tall, maybe a slightly taller. And it gets a little bit deeper green blooms on it. And then they turn white and then they turn in the fall, they'll turn a deep, deep green with some pinks and almost like 
fuchsia colors on them. They are so, so pretty. I actually like the colors that these turn in the fall better than I do the other ones. So that's what will be over there. And then I also planted two new little limes there as well. The other ones, they, they looked a little bit better. The taller ones looked a little bit better over here because there's nothing blocking it. But I'm gonna be a much happier with the little limes over here. We've got some more Russian sage. I kind of mirrored everything up here. And this is a teddy bear magnolia. And it's actually put on a lot of growth. During that really bad ice storm that we had, was that last year or the year before? Two yeah, years ago. Yeah, I think it was two years ago. And we lost the leader out of this. So I don't know how tall this is actually gonna get because of it losing that leader stem. Uh, but I think I will be happy with whatever height that gets because I really didn't want something super tall here, so hopefully it won't get as tall as it's supposed to. But I think it looks great here. The teddy bear leaves, the name comes from the uh, backside of the leaves. They're very, very soft, and I think more so than a typical magnolia. And uh, so that gives it the name of the teddy bear magnolia, and they get these really pretty white blooms on them. All right, so we are going to head down to the garden, and... Just know we didn't do anything. This is real life what our garden looks like right now. There's a lot of work to be done. It overwhelmed me last year. We just put this space in and we didn't do a whole lot with it. I did a little bit of planting, but it was covered in weeds. And so it just completely overwhelmed me. So I'm excited to tackle it this year and tackle it a little bit differently. We've got a, a peach, a peach tree here. And that thing has actually put on a lot of growth and we got peaches last year they were delicious but last year the crows got them and we didn't get a single one of them so i need to do a little bit more upkeep uh before the birds get it and especially on my apple trees too all right so here in the garden let me just show you what a little bit of what we got going on and then i'll tell you a little bit about what we plan on doing this year so this is where we moved the limelight hydrangeas we've got five of them across there they look like they're doing okay so we'll see hopefully they all come back next year because the roots on them they were so spread out we had such a hard time getting all of the roots so hopefully they come back here around the outside of the entire garden we plan on putting a boxwood hedge in and we plan on doing that on a video with y'all too and just to kind of enclose this space i may get another arbor here and put another one i've got another one of these junipers up in the pots of the road which i want to get out of there because i feel like they're just soaking up so much water out of those pots and i'm constantly having to water them even though they are the self-watering containers so i think i'm going to flank the arbor with two of these uh, junipers and then the rest will be the boxwood hedge i'm considering putting a lavender hedge on the outside of it and so when that's in bloom it'll be so pretty with the boxwood the dark green of the boxwood and then the purple in the lavender okay here at this was a really pretty rose this is called the new dawn it is a climbing rose and i believe i only did one of these because these get pretty big i think 18 to 20 feet high so my plan is to have part of it go and climb that arbor and then this side i'm going to let go and kind of climb this side of the fence we're going to get this fence stained before everything comes in bloom that's our goal <laughs> We've got agara here, which is so pretty. I want to get two more of those to kind of fill this area, just to have this flowiness that comes through. These are spent annuals I need to get out of here. Like I said, I have not cleaned up the garden this year yet. I'm hoping to do that here soon. So we've got some show-off forsythias, which are really, really pretty. Uh, in the uh, like late February, March, they get these beautiful yellow blooms on them. I do plan on getting a nine bark. I want to create this like tall, hedgy area. So when you walk into the garden, you don't see this big open space. I want it to feel like you're walking in and you have to take the paths to see what's happening in all areas of the garden. Behind us here is a Macintosh apple. This was full of apples this past year and I was so excited. We kept tasting them to 
see when they were ripening and I'm not kidding you the day they ripened birds came in and cleaned them all out so again this year I will be taking a little bit better care so that I get the apples and the birds don't all right so we've got a lilac and I really need to find my tag because I cannot remember what variety that is I want to say it's the one that gets eight or ten ten to twelve feet tall because I wanted it to be more like a tree form so that one's going to be there the birth bath I opened on video uh, with you all too and I unboxed some other goodies which are still in my garden over there but I think that will be so pretty I've got plans to kind of change up this area a little bit I want this to be sitting down in this pile of blooms I think it will just be so pretty so it, the bird batch just kind of peeks out the chickens they're happy over there I'm hoping to get them a little bit more shade this year this is a crepe myrtle, which we did not get blooms on it. I did not prune it last year. I probably need to do a little bit of cleanup pruning. You can see these branches. We need to get some more air in there. So we'll probably do a little bit of pruning on that here in the next couple months. This, I think I'm actually going to move this. But this is a Spice Girl Viburnum. And this gets, let's see, a six to seven feet tall and seven to eight feet wide. I'm not sure why I put this here, uh, but I did. And so it's going to get moved, but it has in spring the most fragrant blooms on it. I mean, it is just, it is magnificent. So I want to move it to the triangle area in the center. So when you first walk into the garden, you see this in the when you uh, take that path, you just get this beautiful, beautiful smell, but that is awesome. To get the berries on it and to get it to bloom, you need the pollinator variety, which stays a little bit smaller. And it is this one. I think this one stays maybe four to five feet tall, I wanna say. This is the Spice Baby Viburnum. This is an annual grass, Vertigo Penicetum. This is from, pro pro sorry, Proven Winners. And I plan on doing three of these this year because they get huge. This one didn't get as tall as last year, but I mean, typically they just get so, so big. This and the one over here is a vanilla strawberry or a berry. Oh, I think it's a berry white hydrangea. So these turn white, but then they get a little bit more pink at the bottom of the bloom and the white during the summertime. So they're really, really pretty. Not too sure what I'm going to do with this long skinny bed here yet. We do have some tulips planted in here. This bed over here. This bed, I think I'm going to plant either some strawberries in it, which we've got some that I need to clean up, or do almost like a cut flower garden here so it's just tall and kind of blocks them a little bit. But they've, they've gotten out of their uh, area over there and they have scratched all of this out here. So we need to clean that up a little bit. These are two of our, we've got one here and one over there. The wooden beds that, uh, these were the ones that, I mean, how old would you say, how many years would you say we've had these? They are untreated. Four or five. Four or five years probably. They're untreated wood and really they're holding up except for this top lip piece. And they're only about six inches deep maybe. But they, these beds did the best. So in my vegetable garden up there this year, I used a harvest organic soil and nothing thrived whereas these beds were soil that we had previously used I think it was probably miracle grow but then I added in a ton of horse manure when we first put them up here and these things these beds went crazy they thrived so gonna be adding a bunch of horse manure to the beds up there These are the Eden Climbing Roses, and I'm not really sure how tall these things get. I've planted one on each side. I do want to do a little bit more training on these this year. I don't think I'm going to let them climb the fence. Maybe this one. I'm not sure. But to climb over top of this arbor here at the back side, you can see this goes out towards the back to get down to our horse riding ring and our round pen. And uh, so these had the, these I think are second year. I planted these the year before last and the blooms on these things, I mean, they were huge and they were just the most beautiful pinky peach color. They were gorgeous. 
I did transplant some peonies down here. So there's two of those down here. This is a a Granny Smith apple tree. And this one we just moved, I want to say at the beginning of the spring last year or last fall. So this didn't do quite as well. And this one is not hooked up on drip. You can see the difference between this one not hooked up on drip. And then if you turn around and look at that one, that one we had on drip this year. So you can see, I mean, there was a huge growth in that tree this year. So you can see the difference that water makes. So I'm definitely gonna get this apple tree set up on drip this year so that it can really put on its growth. It's also got a blight. So I'm gonna be spraying that here in the next couple of weeks to hopefully get that blight under control. This is another bed that of the wooden beds. We just put a trellis on the back. All right, so these are the grapevines, which did amazing. I didn't even prune them last spring because I thought to myself, they're, they're not gonna produce anything yet. It's second year and they're not gonna produce anything and they're just not gonna be, there's, there's no point in pruning them. Boy, was I wrong. <laughs> they took off. I mean, they, they pulled these poles in. These poles are set in concrete. So I've done a lot of research on pruning grapevines and we will be doing that this year for sure and hopefully getting a decent size harvest because we did get a couple clusters and they were delicious so so good we have the hardy kiwi here that we planted on video last year with you it's a little bit different than a regular kiwi they're smaller almost like a large grape and you pop them in your mouth they don't have the fuzzy coating they're supposed to be sweeter than a regular kiwi I have not tried anything like this, but I thought it was interesting, so we got it and put it in. We've got several different types of blueberries and several different types of strawberries. Some strawberries that are, you know, all season long. Some that give a bigger, uh, a bigger chunk of berries uh, during the springtime. And so the ones that did the best last year were the ones that put off all year. I mean, we were getting some. Uh, September, October, and I think even November, they had berries in there. So these, those did really well. They put on a ton of runners. And so I wanna get those cleaned out and I'll show you where I'm gonna place those in a little bit. We've got nine, I think, different types of blueberries here. One of them is a pink lemonade blueberry. And I haven't tried anything like that either. So I'm excited to try those, but they are actually pink. Right, we are down here this is the kids secret garden which is not very secretive yet but i did plant a hydrangea vine and that didn't seem to do very well last year so but i did just plant it last spring so we'll see how it does and i have always been wanting these mexican heather they always look so pretty come february at you know lowe's your stores and they get these beautiful purple blooms on them but i had five originally to start off with and they just, they haven't done very well. So I'm not sure why, but two of them are still looking pretty good. That one's kind of half and half, but uh, so looking forward to seeing what these do this year. These are variegated privets that I've got planted here. I think they get, I wanna say about eight feet tall or so. I could be wrong on that, but I bought them because they get pretty tall. And so I want this area to be almost like secretive to where you can't really see back here. The kids have their fairy gardens back along under this weeping cherry tree. And so I thought that would just be a really good combination to kind of just have these really pretty bushes. And I leave areas when I'm designing these areas, I leave areas for the annuals. The annuals is what brings in the color and that you can change up every year. And they're also great for new gardens because they add lushness when you're waiting for these bushes and these perennials to grow in. Okay, so over here, this grass, this is, I think a zebra grass and it's chunks that we have had on this farm for since we've moved in here. And I think I had it at my last house and I brought it in in a pot. And so it's just, it's been moved so many times. So I split it this year and it's actually doing really good. So that'll create a nice little area. I do plan, I have got an old door that I wanna set in right here for this hydrangea vine to kind of crawl up over. And so hopefully we'll get that door in here this year. And then we planted a pear tree. I've got two pear trees. I do wanna get, I've got just about, we did um, in that skinny bed that was over there, I missed the plum tree that did not produce anything last year. We just planted that last spring. 
So hopefully this year or maybe next year we'll get a little something from that. But these are pears. This is a Basque. And, uh, and then the other one I think is a kefir, I want to say. I would like to have a cherry tree, a Montmorency cherry tree. And then I think I'll be good on my fruit tree. So over here, this is an area which we are getting ready to work on. I'm going to pull up all the drip. This I did as an in-ground garden this year with my pumpkins and they did terrible. The squash bugs just devoured them. Like I said, this garden, I was overwhelmed by it last year. But So this year, what I plan on doing is a no-dig style garden where we start with the cardboard, we layer it and layer good compost on top and then plant in that. So that is what's gonna be happening over here. And we're gonna be doing rows. So this will be where I'm gonna plant, transplant some of my strawberries. I will have some strawberry rows. I think I'm going to be doing about three foot wide rows. We're also going to be doing landscape fabric that we're gonna burn holes in. So strawberries, this will be my pumpkin patch rows. And then I will have some cut flower rows up here, which I'm all going to be doing. Uh, starting some of those from seed. Most of the ones that we'll be planting over here will be started from seed. And then I'm also incorporating some cut flower garden extras like nine barks and things and geraniums, hardy geraniums into my landscape over there. So this is more so the stuff that will completely die back like annuals over here on this side. And then I can rotate because I'll lift up those plastics because obviously we will do the holes differently for the pumpkin rows that we will, then we will the cut flower rows. My strawberries obviously will stay in one place. But, so I am super excited to get this done because this, I mean, as you can see, this is what it looked like all summer long and it's just, it's completely overwhelming. So that I think is it for our tour this time. I know these can get kind of long, but it'll be interesting, I think for us anyway, to go back and look at them through the year to see how the garden has progressed, progressed because just from looking at pictures from last year to this year, so much has changed and so much will change again this year. So thanks for watching and we will see you next time.